Jane Bobarek, whose father would have survived and returned home had he not been placed on the Liverpool Care Pathway, joins us now. Thank you very much for coming in. You've had a long battle, haven't you, to, have. to prove what indeed. happened. Yes. Take us back then to the moment that your father went into hospital, because he was 92. 92. He yeah. had, had lots infection. of chronic background conditions, but these were being treated adequately. Mm -hmm. Um, he had a routine chest infection and he was admitted being dehydrated already so I presume the hydration aspect was being taken care of as it usually was and a few days later I noticed that he wasn't eating or drinking properly although he said he wanted food so I knew he had an appetite mm -hmm. and I um, reported this to the visiting therapist and she told the, the staff on the Monday morning and they gave him extra fluids. Um, but I didn't know at the time, only less than a quarter of these had been administered. And a few days later, a junior doctor told me that uh, the, the whole team had been talking and they were thinking not to treat my father because he'd developed a further infection. Mm -hmm and his, his chronic heart and liver and kidney conditions were at a terminal stage. That, that's the way it was presented. And I, I said, if antibiotics had a good effect, what would be the result? And he said, even then, the problem is his heart. So he was, effectively, he wasn't being treated at this point. I only found out later he already wasn't being treated. This was 29 hours without oral fluids and a day and a half without his routine medications by the time I was even approached. So at the time, it was obviously quite a confusing picture in that mm. you were being told that there were various conditions going on, which actually you subsequently discovered, but a yes. lot later yes. wasn't the case. Mm. He, he's, he seemed to be deteriorating, but you now know that's mm. because he wasn't getting the fluids. Was Absolutely. it a simple case of the hydration, do you think? I think it was lack of care, lack of oral dehydration, lack of clinically assisted de uh, rehydration. And I'm not sure if this was deliberate, incompetency or what. Because you were told that he was getting a lot of fluid, well, but, he, but he wasn't. I had, what, alerted, th I had alerted them to the, the fact that I felt he wasn't getting a, enough intake, yes. So I presume this was being taken care of, that and they had why, dealt with this. And why do you think he wasn't being given that fluid? I think, it was a, I think it was a mixture of things. I think it was difficult. I think the cannula came out, his cannula came out. It wasn't reinserted. The fluid wasn't continued. Mm -hmm. I'm, not, I'm really not sure. I think it was a, a lot of factors that it's just lack, lack of substandard care and lack of adequate care. That's, that's your dad. Uh, that's he, him, he was, yes. Yeah, tell, tell us a bit about him. He was quite a character. That's what people usually said to me in the hospital. He's quite a character, your dad. And he was. He was very fiery. He was very opinionated. And even though he was over 90, he had life left in him yet. And when I saw him in the bed deteriorating, I presumed, and it was presented to me as this, as this was part of his conditions. His medical condition, the te deterioration was actually due to that. Well, I, I, I found out from the report and from my research that it wasn't, no. That dehydration was to be likely caused and the removal of his routine medications. Why, why were you so certain? Because you had doctors telling you he had an infection. You, you mm. could see the deterioration and you didn't know at that stage that it was down to hydration. Why were you so sure that actually you weren't getting the whole picture? Well, I, I still, even up until the moment he died, I believed he had another infection and that his organs were failing. But it looked to me like he was battling for life. It looked like he wasn't ready to let go. And the, and the question was whether to intervene when I believed his organs were absolutely failing and this was at the end stage. And afterwards, I mean, I, I left the hospital knowing that something profoundly wrong had happened, that I'd witnessed something deeply wrong. 
and that's when I started to pursue it myself. I applied for his records. The, doc the doctors had said to you that they'd been talking about his condition and whether to mm. effectively put him on the Liverpool care pathway. How was, how was, how was that put to you? What well, discussions were there? Was, Did you agree to it? No, this was, was very odd because it was at 5.30 in the, in the uh, late afternoon and I'd been asking them all day. I'd been alerting them he hasn't eaten, he hasn't drunk all day. I'm, I'm concerned about his... I was alerting that there was something wrong. And I presumed it was presented to me as if this was if his ongoing medical conditions were... This was a consequence of them. I, uh, d hydration wasn't even on my radar. I naturally assumed it's such basic care. And I had alerted them to that fact that, it, that he'd been given all adequate... This is what I presume. So were they open, though, with you about putting him on the Liverpool care no, pathway? No, Did you know anything about the Liverpool care pathway? No, no. Stage? Then the, the, the junior doctor said, I can go and get the papers for the Liverpool care pathway now. And I thought that, that alerted me that something, something was wrong. And so I said, well, I agree to hold on with the... I, I thought I was agreeing just to stop the antibiotics, just to hold on for that. But I presumed everything else was continuing it was just the medication that was on hold for a further infection so you didn't know that it was but effectively I, a pathway that was going to ease him to his well, death i didn't know it had been started but as i say i think it was effectively underway without the paperwork mm. the paperwork was put in place the next day but i think a day and a half before i was even spoken to it was already underway just without the the paperwork in place and i had power of attorney so this is the last thing I was expecting. I, uh, when I had power attorney, I should have been consulted regarding all medical decisions, all clinical decisions. So after he died, you asked to see the records? Yes, yes. How quickly did you work out what had actually happened? Well, um, the records in themselves that were sent to me weren't complete. There was a few pages, crucial pages, missing that confirmed the that he hadn't received all his hydration, his IV fluids. And this I only received, these pages I received after the investigation when I pursued and pursued them asking for an explanation or to give me these pages. So I received the pages incomplete really and I worked, I just did a lot of research and I could see the responses I was given by the hospital. The first response said, it was in the best, um, my, they, they followed the best principles of palliative care and that his organs were failing. He wouldn't have recovered anyway, even with treatment. The second response told me that um, his diagnosis of dying and his care was correct in all aspects. And I could see the, the clinical information they were giving me didn't match up with the medical records. I'm not a non. I'm a non-medical person. I was going to say, what is your background? Because I mean, it's quite something when doctors are telling you something, very and then senior, every expert very that you're cons doctors, you're being yes. sort of told to get advice from after that is basically saying that they're agreeing with a position that is completely different to the position that you suspect. Mm -hmm. what, what was your background that made you sort of able to to pick your way through that and keep on fighting? Um, because it 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 was odd to me that a very senior palliative care physician was telling me that my father was dying on a Wednesday morning, but it was okay to consult me on a Thursday evening. That sounded to me odd in itself. And when I picked through the detail and I could see it didn't match up with his medical records, all that was left was a prognosis that he was likely to die in the future. That was really literally all that was left when you removed the incorrect statements made. This was a fight that went over three years. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> how, how much toing and froing was there? How, how difficult was it? Um, well, I managed to get the final pages. As I say, that was a year after he died. I got the final and the, the, the puzzle fell into place because those pages, you, they were nursing notes and you could see that he hadn't, the full doses of his fluids hadn't been administered. And so then I referred it to the ombudsman because the... the hospital didn't want to pursue it any further. And the ombudsman said, you were right. Yes. What yes. was it like when you had that through? Well, it wasn't a surprise really, but I found out 
I still had even believed to the, uh, that point um, that my father's organs had been at the end stage, that his background conditions were terminal. But um, that was a shock to me that he, he, he wasn't. As, as far it, as we know, yours is the only case where it has been um, assessed that the Liverpool Care Pathway did actually lead to the death of somebody who otherwise would have survived. Mm. But he, yes, and I think, well, his withdrawal of treatment a day and long before the, the Liverpool Care pa Pathway was in place, yes. Yes, his, his reduction. I mean, if you reduce fluids and basic mm. medications in a healthy person, you're going to cause deterioration. But if you do that to an old man, you certainly are. I mean, the, the reason the Liverpool Care Pathway was introduced mm. was to try to ensure a dignified and mm. comfortable death for somebody mm. uh, who was certainly dying. Yes. But it has now been phased out because of concerns mm. around the way it was used. Do you think there are other lessons to learn? Well, I think the new guidelines are, are deeply worrying and repeat many of the, the same elements. The, the constant repetition in the new guidelines about uh, diagnosing dying, the, the dying patient, as if they can be diagnosed. There's an inference that you can diagnose somebody as dying and you cannot. There's no clinical evidence you can do that. And one, once you make that assumption and, and start removing treatment, it is a self-fulfilling prophecy. What would you tell somebody who might have concerns what they should look out for if they've got a relative in hospital? Well, I think you ha I mean, you shouldn't have to do this, but I'm afraid you do. You have to be suspicious about what's going on and look for make sure your relative is fully hydrated orally and even IV. Make sure that IV fluids are all given, or if they're taken down, why they are taken down. And and be constantly aware that treatment and care can be removed without you being aware of it.